My name is Michael. I work for SAP since a couple of years in the Cloud Foundry team. And I would like to talk with you about our experience with the admin UI and why we ended up deploying it as a Cloud Foundry application. The admin UI is a very useful application for Cloud Foundry operator that allows you to visualize a lot of metrics and operational data. For example, you can look for a specific application and see in which Diego cells the application is deployed or on one Diego cell uh, have a list of uh, all the applications that are deployed on these cells and many, many other useful information. Our, our old architecture uh, with the admin UI was a Bosch release. If you're not familiar with Bosch, it's a great tool uh, to manage lifecycle for uh, virtual machines. So our, this application was deployed in a virtual machine and we had to keep care uh, about the Ruby framework. Actually, the Bosch release, it's uh, open source, it's on the Cloud Foundry community, but it started to, to be uh, an effort to update and operate as to just update the source code of application. We had to spend a lot of time to create a new Bosch release, to test it, to deploy it, and every deployment takes time as it's a, a virtual machine that gets deployed and not just an application. So we started to, to think uh, to use a better um, framework, a better platform to, to deploy our application. And we started with Bosch because there was already a Bosch release uh, available for the admin UI. We are in a team where we deploy Cloud Foundry with Bosch, we deploy Concourse with Bosch, we deploy our monitoring and logging stack with Bosch. So we started using uh, it also for the admin UI. But why not making use of uh, uh, features of Cloud Foundry also to deploy our applic uh, the application we, we deliver with um, our product. So why not on Cloud Foundry? This way we would get uh, uh, the advantage of simple and faster updates and we would stop caring about the underlying framework. So we don't need to, to update Ruby anymore. We don't need to check for vulnerabilities on the framework we are using. What do you have to keep in mind when you want to port the admin UI on a as a Cloud Foundry application? First thing is that we don't really need persistency. The admin UI has a database, but it's used as a cache. So we don't really need that to, to deploy it on Cloud Foundry. What we need is still uh, the same setup of a UAA client. So this is uh, as it is described on the admin UI GitHub project. You can put that in a shell script. You can use that on your um, uh, automation system like Concourse and Jenkins before uh, pushing the, the admin UI. We're not going to, to talk about that. We also need a special space on Cloud Foundry. You cannot just deploy the application on a trial developer space because you need special permission. The admin UI needs to have a connection to various Cloud, Cloud Foundry endpoints to gather its data. What we also need uh, is to move a configuration file uh, from a file in the, in the file system to uh, environment variables. So we would like to, to set the configuration of the application uh, using the Cloud Foundry manifest. We want to use only one place to put all the configuration of the application, not use the manifest for just the Cloud Foundry a related part and then push the application with already the configuration inside. We want to keep the source code and the configuration in two different places. Let's start with uh, security groups. What do we need to, uh, to run the admin UI on a, on a Cloud Foundry space? We need a special security group to allow connection to the Cloud Foundry, uh, Cloud Controller and UAA databases. We need to connect to that to get information about org spaces and more. We need to connect to the NAT endpoints. That means we need to uh, connect to the private IP of uh, NAT VMs in uh, your Cloud Foundry deployment. 
we need to connect to the API endpoints. And this means the internal IP of the API virtual machines, not the public one, which is exposed by the load balancer. After that, the main issue is uh, the configuration file. The resolution is not the best, but you can trust me that this is just a YAML file with a list of, of configuration parameters you need to set to run the admin UI. One can be the, the address of the, of the database, uh, the cloud controller database, the UAA database, and so on. So the admin UI is expecting a YAML file in a specific place of a configuration folder. But we want to set that through the Cloud Foundry manifest. So how can we do that without touching the source code of the admin UI? This is uh, the template of the manifest we are going to use to deploy the application on Cloud Foundry. So we see that we pass all the configuration we would like to set as environment variables, and then we launch the application with a different command. So you would expect to start immediately the Ruby process of the application, but instead we launch a bash script. This allowed us to, to read from the environment the configuration we need and write that to a file. This is a really simple bash script that allows you to run ERB to evaluate a template and write the configuration file inside the container. This happens inside the container after the application is pushed. And then we start the application. This is an example of a ERB template. So it's just the configuration file plus the ERB code that allows us to read from the environment and write to the file. This is a really simple trick to immediately push an application that needs a configuration file, but we don't want to, to hard code the configuration into uh, the application we push. We want to pass that as an environment through the application manifest. This is the suggested way uh, from Cloud Foundry and has other advantages, like you can look at the configuration by running CFM and so on. So to do that, we just need to push our application with two additional files inside the, the source code. We just add something. We don't touch the existing code. We add our start script and the ERB template that we read from the environment. Let's look at how does it look like on the file system. From the bottom, we have a start script we just saw, the configuration template, the ERB file we just saw. We have a manifest template that we will use to uh, generate all the configuration we need. Uh, for example, we can read that configuration from a, a Cloud Foundry deployment or from other sources. We have an app a YAML file that just includes the URL on GitHub of the admin UI source code and the commit ID. So we don't even need to keep the admin UI as a submodule as it was on the Bosch release. So if we need to, to fork the application for whatever reason, we can just change the URL on the app YAML. In the action folder, we have three files that are just bash scripts that allows us to create the manifest using the template. We, every one of you, uh, should, if you deploy a Cloud Foundry application, you will have your own way to, to generate the manifest. I don't think you just hard code in the manifest all the, uh, the credentials, but you just have a template and then you add the credential depending on where you're, uh, which Cloud Foundry deployment you are going to to use. We have a deploy script that just will clone uh, the, the source code of the admin UI and will add the stub folder and then run a CF push. We have also a pre-deploy script that will just check for the existence of the security groups that we need. This is the comparison with a Bosch release. You can't even read, but there are uh, more than 60 files most of them are generated by Bosch, that's true, but we still need to take care of um, a lot of things. One of that is the, the Ruby framework. This way we make use of the Cloud Foundry uh, Ruby build pack and we get for free an update on every uh, updates of the platform. 
What we, what we gain also is uh, the speed of uh, redeployment of the application. Uh, before, it was over five minutes to, to start and recreate, especially when we need to update also the stem cell, the uh, OS of the virtual machine we use to, to run the application, and it takes time. It's a single turn, so you cannot even use that during that time. And if you want to try to change something, it's still an effort to change the Bosch release and to start it again with Bosch instead of just a CF push. But we still have a performance issue. It's one of the issues that we didn't talk much before, and uh, uh, it's about the load of this application. The admin UI is a great tool, but when it's deployed on a uh, productive landscape, we start to get a lot of load because the application subscribes to Doppler and as an admin user, and it gets all the metrics and all the logs, all the information from a Cloud Foundry deployment. This means that we get one metrics, for example, as a latency for each and every get request that hits your landscape. On a productive landscape, this it means a lot. And the admin UI is a Ruby process on a single thread and is not able to handle all this information. So as we are not Ruby experts, we started again to think, how can we improve the performance without touching the code of the application? Can we put something in front of that and filter the data we don't need before it reaches the application? And this is the idea, to put a, another Cloud Foundry application written in Go between the admin UI and the Doppler endpoint. This way, we would be able to uh, drop all the metrics that are about to reach the application and we would improve the performance. So how can we do that? First of all, we need to make the admin UI target our nozzle, our application, our Go application, instead of a Doppler endpoint in Cloud Foundry. Then this nozzle should be able to authenticate to Doppler. But we don't want to write the admin UI uh, token, admin UI credential into the nozzle because this is a Cloud Foundry application and it's public. So how can we do that? Well, if we just set the Doppler endpoint on the admin UI to be the nozzle instead of Doppler, the admin UI will already send to the nozzle the authentication and the subscription ID necessary to uh, request data to Doppler. This way, on the nozzle, we can read the subscription ID and the token used by the admin UI that is thinking to, uh, is believing to connect to Cloud Foundry, but instead it's connecting to our application with that as a proxy. Our application will use this data and we connect to the real Doppler endpoint. At this point, we have two um, WebSocket, one client and one server on the nozzle. The server will wait for the admin UI connection, and the client will connect to the real Doppler. When the connection goes through, we make all the stream of events pass through a filter written again in Go, and this is open source, you can try that. And our filter will look just for value metrics and for container metrics. This is the type of information that the admin UI cares about. On the value metrics, we also filter out all the latency information. That is the big chunk of data that is hitting the, the admin UI that we don't need at all. What are the results of this nozzle put in between the admin UI and Cloud Foundry Doppler? Well, uh, the admin UI on, a productive, on our productive landscape, landscape uh, took six seconds to load just the first page. And this becomes frustrating when you need to look for some data. You need to change tab and it takes three, four seconds every time. After putting the nozzle in between, we managed to take that six seconds down to 0.3 seconds. Looking at uh, the logs of the nozzle, we see that we filter out around 97% of the 
of the events that would have hit the admin UI instead. On our landscape, we have around 800,000 events every 30 seconds. And most of them are useless for the, for the admin UI. Looking also at the CPU load of the application, the blue one is the default admin UI just deployed on Cloud Foundry that is always at, capped at 100%, but that was exactly the same case also when it was deployed via Bosch on a virtual machine. Also because if you add more cores, it doesn't, uh, doesn't help as the, the application is a single thread. Using the nozzle, we managed to get the CPU down up to 40%. We still have spikes. We still hit the second bottleneck on the, on the line, but this way uh, we have better chance to not lose data because when the admin UI is taking too long to process data from Doppler, Doppler will start dropping out information before sending it. The nozzle is open source since one and a half day probably. You can look at that, you can try it, you can deploy that as a Cloud Foundry operator and you can put that in between the admin UI and your Doppler endpoint. You just need to set uh, the address of a real Doppler endpoint on, uh, of your Cloud Foundry installation on the nozzle settings and tell the admin UI to connect to your nozzle, which is a Cloud Foundry application. What would be the plans for the future? First of all, would be to make the admin UI more Cloud Foundry friendly. What does that mean? Would like to get rid of this workaround that we use to wrap the admin UI with a shell script to read the, from the environment and write the configuration file. It would make sense just to make a pull request on the application and make that able to read from the environment directly. But this way we managed to deploy that in a couple of hours without asking anyone, without asking the owners of the application to change anything. And this is a great thing. Would like to try to use a persistent database, even if it's not really necessary. This could uh, improve the performance as every time we restart the application, we lose the, the, the database and then takes maybe one minute to, to to be populated again. The last thing would be uh, how can we scale it up? This is something we still have to start to look into that and would be really interesting because we managed to, to, to solve a bottleneck, but it's not enough and uh, getting on uh, bigger and bigger landscapes, we will still have uh, issues in the future. Actually, the nozzle is um, also the nozzle, it's a workaround as Logregator uh, now has announced a way to uh, filter the metrics to request only what you need. But the only thing it's implemented right now, I think you can only ask either for logs or for metrics. You cannot ask for specific metrics. And our issue is that uh, it's the metrics of the issue, and we are getting all the metrics, and we don't want the latency metrics that are 90% of the metrics we receive. And this will uh, hit the application real hard. To conclude, we managed to move out the configuration file of the application into the Cloud Foundry manifest without touching the application code at all. This is not the nicest way to do that, but you can do that in a couple of minutes. You can just add a shell script that will start instead of directly starting the application and you can read from the environment and write in the configuration file. We managed also to greatly improve the performance of the application again, almost without touching the source code. Say almost because the application did not support an override of a Doppler endpoint. So we had to add this as a configuration parameter, and this was a really small pull request. But this way, on Cloud Foundry, we managed to create a new application on a, new, a different language that improves the performance of an application we don't own, and this would have took much more time to try and fix that in the, in the, in the admin UI. 
This is not, of course, the final solution, but this allows you to fix issues in a quick way and uh, without uh, touching the, the, the code of the original code of the application. With that, do you have any question? So I was wondering, this uh, admin UI is uh, mostly for the, in this case, SAP administrator, or is for customers to access to their own kind of a metrics? The admin UI is only an application with admin rights, so it's for the operator that has an overall view of the whole landscape. Yeah, mostly for the uh, platform operator. It's for the platform operator, it's not for, for users, yeah. you don't have any questions, I have one. And that would be, why would you deploy the admin UI which is for a Cloud Foundry operator on Cloud Foundry? Does it make sense? You do not uh, deploy something that it's a monitoring uh, tool on Cloud Foundry to monitor Cloud Foundry. Well, this makes sense, but uh, it depends on your usage of this application. This is a great application to browse for data, to get information of, on something, but it's not a monitoring tool. So we have a monitoring stack, we have a login stack, but chances are if Cloud Foundry is uh, experiencing several problems, we don't need the admin UI to fix that. This is just when you have to find out where an application is deployed on which cell, what are the application deployed in a cell that maybe it's behaving in a strange way and you want to see what are the application affected and check if it's really a problem or not and so on. But everything you can do in the admin UI, you can do also directly uh, from the source of information. It's a really painful to go into the database and look for data to start getting all the metrics from firewalls and do the query on your own but you can still do that without the admin UI. So in our experience, uh, the trade-off of uh, deploying that for, on Cloud Foundry and the, all the time we save for the life cycle of the application, it's fine for us to, to have a risk of not having it available when uh, we have huge issues on Cloud Foundry, as also it's only a, a single application, so we don't have many instances deployed, but that it's fine for our use case. I was at that talk and that was really, really similar. One thing would be, I'm not sure if uh, the top uh, plugin of uh, CLI is uh, uh, showing all the information or just the top of uh, the column you're, you're ordering to. So on the admin UI you see everything. So I can show on the very first slide there is a screenshot of the uh, application and you see that we have uh, 1,100 tabs of uh, application list. So we can see everything. You can look for ev everything. You can see for crashed application and so on. You can have the all details of what's happening on the landscape. That's why also it's uh, uh, the, the performance is an issue because it's getting all the data of uh, your Cloud Foundry deployment. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you very much, and we'll be around here if you need something else. <laughs>